Muli Bwanji, Muli Bwanji, Muli Bwanji. Welcome back to the Be Official Podcast. I'm your host, your guy, Paul Payne 837 and I'm joined by my co-host, Director Dane the Burden. Come on, come on, come on. You're done now. You're done now. So, uh, we just want to say shout outs to you guys. Thank you so much for the warm and support you guys have been showing us. You know, the liking, sharing, and commenting means a lot to us, you know. So, we're just going to roll back to the intro or roll into the intro, then we kick it off from there. Yeah. Let's roll into the intro. Welcome back to the Be Official Podcast. Uh, so today we are going to go a little bit deep, you know, and share something that uh, we are all going through, you know. So yeah. today's uh, topic is uh, rather very, 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 very deep. And this is something that we we have been uh, going forward trying to talk about it, yeah. you know. So today's uncut conversations are based on uh, how uh, strong your mental health can be, you know, or how uh, your mental health can uh, survive yeah. in this uh, day and age and how things can be, you know. So talking about mental health, I feel like this is, some, this is a topic that uh, a lot of us, try to shy away, you true, know, true. especially for us men, because we never gossip a lot like women, you know, <laughs> so it's rather kind of like really heavy on us. But this is a topic for each and everybody, you know, so mental health and staying strong in your uh, line of uh, health, like keeping your mental health really alert and captivated is really, really strong and uh, something that uh, we commend because Imagine you are a lion, right? Imagine if we all know that the lion is uh, wild a animal. wild animal, right? Apex predator. Exactly. So imagine if it's caged, right? And it's being in a place whereby it's being poked around by humans, right? So meaning part of its pride, because it walks with pride, Part of its pride is stripped away, right? Part of its nature is stripped away from being what it was created to be, yeah. right? So imagine you being free, you being the lion in the world, right? And you nurturing your, uh, your, 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 your natural uh, habitants or natural gifts that you've been given to live in the world because that's the only way you can be king, right? When you are free and you're able to live in the means of what God has created you to be. Yeah. So if you're in a place where you're caged and you're being uh, confined, how can you be king? How can you be queen? It's really hard, you know? Mm -hmm. So we're here to try to break that ice and try to give you a little bit of some pointers on how you can navigate through that um, phase, you yeah. know? So without further ado, Welcome to the Uncut Conversations. Director D. Yeah, sure, sure. Dek Sevanya. He's back at it. He's back at it. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try on Dek Sevanya. <laughs> All right, Director D. Yeah. How can we break free from the caged mind mentality and tap into our natural abilities? Mm. Our mm. avatar mm. states. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> See what you did there. Amen. Um, I think, first of all, uh, I like the, the analogy that mm -hmm. you used about the lion. Uh, one of the things that we understand about a lion is it's the king of the jungle. Yes. So imagine the king of the jungle being kept as a, as a pet. Mm. Mm. Stripping Domesticated. it, Domesticated. Stripping it yeah. away of its natural instincts. Yes. Uh, that's why many, many times you find not everybody will advise on you keeping such an animal as a pet, but mm -hmm. shout outs to my people in Dubai. Hey Amen. <laughs> we see you. We're coming. Money makes you do that. You <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? yeah. But like, um, it's, it's, it's not meant to be in that place. That's not its natural habitat. It's, it's natural instincts yes. are, you know, mm -hmm. Out there in the world, doing what it does best, yes. know, ripping other animals apart. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the illustration, but like, yeah, um, many many of us mm -hmm. are like the the lion. Mm -hmm. We we've been caged in places that were not our natural habitats. True. Uh, I love what what 
what T D Jake said. I mm. think we 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 like that man because yeah, man. he drops dimes. Yeah. But he said, um today we have frustrated individuals True. in a workplace. Mm. It's like that's, what, what that's, does that mean? Yep. Just like the lion yes. being domesticated and caged in the place where it's not supposed to be, mm-hmm. same applies today. Many of us are in workforces that we do not like what we do. No. So what happens? Many of us are frustrated in our nine to fives mm. because your, your, your natural instincts you'd find is to be an entrepreneur, right? Yes. Your natural instincts was built to be an entrepreneur. But then you are stuck in nine to five. Not, not that that's a bad thing. Mm. But then often at the times you find you're in the work in your workplace and mm. you're not happy. True. You're in your workplace and you're always frustrated. Mm. You're in your workplace, you're always angry. That should tell you something. True. That I'm I'm not meant to be here. Mm-hmm. Because deep down we know what we want to do. So mm. you find you're, you're, you're going to your nine to five mm-hmm. and deep down you want to start your own business. Mm. So every day you're waking up and you get to a place of work, you're not happy, anything that sets you off when you're at work. True. That should be you listening to your inner voice mm-hmm. to say, yo, what are you trying to tell me? Mm. But often at the times that we abandon the voice that's telling us, say, hey, I think you're not meant to be here. No. Deep down, you know that you've always wanted to start this business, small yes. business. So get to it. But we are we are always afraid to take that risk, and mm-hmm. then you find us stuck in uh, an employment mm-hmm. where we're not happy with what we're doing. True. You know, stuck in that mindset. Mm-hmm. But I want to run quickly uh, to how we, we can, can help tap into our natural yeah, abilities, tap into our natural abilities, and get away from that cage mindset. I just came prepared. Mm. They say uh, preparing. Uh, eh? what, what's it saying? It says uh, not preparing. Not preparing. preparing yes, not preparing <laughs> is preparing to fail. So I, I, I came with some few pointers that I want to highlight. Number one is awareness. Uh, being aware of what's going on around you is very important. And many other times we we take away the fact that mm-hmm. you can sense that there's something wrong, but then you you you, you are uh, you know hitting that to the side like mm-hmm. oh, there's nothing wrong. But then being aware is very important. We need to be aware of what's going on with our mind to True. say my mind is trying to tell me something. Mm-hmm. Let me try and pay attention to that mm-hmm. uh, and challenge. Uh, many many times we we. People were prone to our comfort zones. Mm-hmm. We don't like to be challenged. But then that's why uh, being an interpre- entrepreneur is not for everybody because you need to step out of your comfort zone True. and try this thing out mm-hmm. where you're not, you don't know where it's going, mm-hmm. but you just got to keep going. Risk. Yes. Yes. Mm. Better way. Risk. Mm. Uh, the other one is being mindful uh, and being present. Like I said, awareness, I think stems from also being mindful of your surrounding to yes. say, okay, uh, how do I navigate this situation that I'm in? Many other times, I think most of us take leaps. Uh, not that it's, it's, it's not wrong to take leaps, but it's, it's good to take calculated risks. risks. Yes. While you're doing your nine to five and you know, like, uh, your, your mind is telling you you're not supposed to be here. Mm-hmm. Calculated risk is planning out how you're going to exit that place. True. Do your nine to five. Save enough income to go and start at your business. Don't dip your nine to five and go start at your business with zero capital. Mm. So taking calculated risk is very important. Mm. Plan out how you're going to navigate through those waters so that you make it easier. That's why they say mm-hmm. uh, work smart, not hard. True. Our old folks used to work hard, but they paved the way so that we work smart from their previous lessons. Mm. Uh, self-compassion. Uh, it's its always important to be lenient with yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, be patient with yourself as you take those steps. Otherwise, the journey for an entrepreneur or everybody that's trying to get out of their mind is often not easy. So be patient with yourself while you go through that. Uh, also, educate yourself. Mm. Many times we are excited about yes. the things we want to do, mm-hmm. but then we don't take too much time 
uh, researching mm-hmm. on what we want to do. Okay. Uh, so research. Uh, be educated about what you want to do mm-hmm. in that state. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also take action. Many of the times we plan. Yeah. We're good at planning, but without execution. Planning without execution is nothing. Words are cheap. Action is is what's keen. Uh, and lastly is persistence. Mm-hmm. Not... It's not every time you're going to wake up feeling motivated. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not every time that you're going to wake up wanting to do what you do. But uh, I love what you always say to me is, what do you do when the motivation goes wow. away? It's now you to self-motivate yourself yes. to wake up. Because it's not every day that he's always on my toes. Like, hey, hey, hey. There, there are days that I'm waiting on him to motivate me and he's down. So what do I do? Yes. I'm the one that I'm needs to motivate finished. myself <laughs> and go and motivate him Amen. as well. You know, so always learn to self-motivate and keep going. Amen. Persistence is key. That's why they say motivation is for the amateurs. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah. So that's, I think, uh, the, those are the things I would, I would highlight on trying to get off the caged mindset. All right. Before this man turns this into a sermon, uh, <laughs> let me throw my two cents. Amen. You know? So yeah. I think for me, right? Yeah. We have all watched a movie titled uh, Should Be George of the Jungle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was a certain movie again that was similar. It was a cartoon mm-hmm. similar to George of the Jungle where uh, the kid was born in the jungle, right? Yeah. yeah. So him growing in the jungle and um, living with the animals, he thought he was an animal too, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there were certain times you'd think, you know, how, why am I not, why don't I have fur? Why yeah. don't I have, so he started questioning certain things, yeah. right? And as he was growing, mm. you know, he started uh, trying to understand and learn himself. You know, because when you're young, yeah. you follow whatever you're taught. Yes. So he was following whatever the animals were teaching him mm-hmm. at that moment, mm-hmm. right? So he followed everything. But as he grew and started getting aware of his environment, he said, I don't look like these people, yeah. you know? I mean, I don't look like these creatures, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I should have my uh, inhabitants somewhere. Somewhere, I should have my people, you know. And he started researching and trying to find, and then he found out that there was a human race race out there, you know. There were people like him outside there, you know. So, in short, it's trying to first... So, how how do you come out of the cage mindset, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Question the things that you have been taught. Uh, Because I feel oftentimes mm. we grow up just... Doing. The, just doing, you know, and following whatever we're taught. Yes. So if this was the way, that's the way, you yes. know. No matter if somebody even tells you, like, yo, I feel like, you know, you even get upset. Like, yeah. what can you tell me? I've known this all my life, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's very important sometimes to question certain things that you've grown up in, True. you know. True. That's one way to start getting out of the cage mentality. Just like he's saying, right? Um, challenge. When you challenge yourselves into a space where you you know that, okay, I feel this is unlike me, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Because now when you're growing and maturing, it's like God is trying to lead you to your purpose, true, right? True, so true. trying to get you to your purpose, it will start throwing things at you yes. that will start, you know, pushing you. And those are what we call intuition sometimes, yes. you know, like, okay, I feel like what I've been doing for a long time doesn't add up, you yeah. know? Like, to be honest, yeah. the history we've learned doesn't add up you know part of the history that we have is 80 percent white yes to be honest you know and we've never bothered to question that exactly you know so when he brought when he told me to watch a certain series called njinga ah of which it's the true woman king not that movie you watched i mean yeah but i feel like but that series yeah njinga like really reveals the history behind us yes we have never read anything about Njinga, yes. you know. She fought the Europeans, the white uh, supremacy, whatever, yes. till her last breath, you know. And it's not there in the history books. how much of their books. stories out exactly, in the history you know? books. You know? It's been scrapped off. Yeah. So as you are growing, learn to be in a place where you start questioning certain things. And I think the hardest part is now unlearning those things, you know, and trying to step into what God created you to be, mm-hmm. right? And trying to make you understand how powerful you are. Because the devil, the devil's assignment is always to keep you caged. Amen. Because he knows once you're loose, he knows it's danger, right? Yeah. So now how do you jump into your natural habitants, right? Yes. 
the first step and learning, right? Yes. Once you start unlearning, you start to learn what God has scripted around your life. And the only way to do that is now trying to find like people minded that are in your space. True. You know? True. Um, because in the first place, you need to do it alone, right? It's a self journey. Yeah. It's a journey that you need to hump on on your own. Self discovery. Exactly. You don't need people to uh, be on your IG yeah. telling you. Because imagine if everybody was give gave you a name, would you know what your identity was? Yeah. So if everybody called you a certain name, mm-hmm. you'll be lost. You know. So it's very important first before you go into thy world to know your true name. Because yeah. even if they called you. Masa Uso, <laughs> you know, that's that's not his name. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm like, that's not my name. Yeah. Mavuto, that's yeah. not my name, you sure. know. I know that this is my name. So understand your self-worth and then now jump into thy world to find everything that God created you to be. Mm. Mm. This man is good. Dying for days, my people. I give Dying respect for to days. him, bro. <laughs> I, mean, I learned from this man. All right, all right. So, Mr. 827. Yes, sir. Uh, what are some practical strategies for overcoming the victim mindset and taking control of our lives? Mm, 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 mm. I'm, that's I'm deep. waiting on the dime. That's, to that's deep, me. amen. Yeah, amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I go deeper, Papa. <laughs> um, we have all, I think, been in a place where we acted like victims, right? Yes. Where we've wanted sympathy from people. Yes. You know, and. Uh, I think that part is one of uh, those things that stretches our lives mm-hmm. to a certain point where mm-hmm. now you start realizing that that excuse is no longer valid, you know. So the victim mindset, everybody sometimes possesses that. Mm-hmm. But it's how you come out of that phrase, you know. We've all been hurt, broken, you know. Some people have lost their loved ones, you know. Some people haven't had a privilege growing up in a family where you are well to do, you know. But... Um, the very most important thing, I think, for me, the mm. first step is first realizing the root cause, right? Like we always talk about, yeah. trauma. Yes. First, look at your past, right? Look at how you've grown up. Like, how has been your past? Yes. That's why we always uh, talk about, me and him, like, the, the day we're going to have a chance to uh, get and see a therapist, we'll have to we'll do that, yeah. you know, because it's very important first to go to the root cause, you know. Every time when a tree is suffering, right, the first thing you need to think about is are the roots functioning mm-hmm. because those are where the life is mm-hmm. so for us right as human beings i feel our past is where our life has been right true, how true. we grew up is where the true uh things that have uh, now uh come up mm-hmm. in our present life those are things we need to trace back mm-hmm. to where we uh came from right so now understanding how you grew up mm-hmm. and understanding the environment that you are in and acknowledging the fact that these things played a very important role to who I am, right? Mm-hmm. Let me give an example. Let's say your bloodline has had an issue with anger management mm-hmm. or temper issues, mm-hmm. right? And then all of a sudden, in your child, I mean, in your adulthood, right? Mm-hmm. You spaz a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, you're all over the place, right? And you, there you are. Don't want it in. This is who I am. Yeah. You know, never do so chabene. You know. Already, you're trying to cover yourself Mm -hmm. and you don't want to take full responsibilities of your actions, right? So it's very important, again, to listen to your loved ones because those are the people who care about you and they they want to see you do better, Mm -hmm. right? So if they tell you, bro, I feel... What, you know, how you approach certain things is a little bit ragged, you know? So if you could, you know, at least... You know... You know, so there are certain yeah, things yeah. like that that, you know, the victim mindset will work in those moments, right? Mm-hmm. But time comes when you're 50. Are you going to be saying the same thing, you know? Oh, no, I'm an orphan. You know, I've lived my life as an orphan. That's yeah, why I'm not doing yeah, well. Yeah. You know, time comes when that fades away, you know? No, my parents never had money to take me to school and all that kind of stuff. Time comes when that mindset gets you away. Yeah. Remember, like we said in the first question, right? Mm-hmm. The devil always prones to lock you in, right? So... It's giving you those reasons that you shouldn't try mm-hmm. to take a step. True. Like we say, right? Getting comfortable in your comfort zone. Yeah. That's the number one mistake, right? So it's very important to realize and say, I need to first know the root cause, mm-hmm. then now work on that. Because once you start working on that, you turn out to be now a different creature, right? Mm-hmm. Now you understand, you, you're self-aware of your environment. Yes. 
and you're fully awoke, right? Because sure. even if the devil would have come and said, ah, no, this is the way you should go, yeah. you know, but uh, big man, I, <laughs> my, my way is this side, yeah. you know, you understand yourself. So the victim mindset is always there to stop us from being who we have been created to be. Mm-hmm. So make sure that all the time when that comes around, mm-hmm. sit down. Don't sure. act out of your emotions, right? Mm-hmm. Always learn to be a thinker and focus, right? Mm-hmm. Sit down, take a step, and reflect on your life. True. Then from there, I think you would definitely understand better how your life should live. Mm. Too much. Man, has got too much data. Mm. Uh, mm. But just trying to, I think, add on to what you said. Yeah. Some practical strategies for overcoming, you know, a victim mindset. I think I would uh, stem... Uh, you said most of what I wanted to say. <laughs> right, yeah. Number one, I yeah. think, like like you put it, taking ownership. Uh, many other times we run away from responsibilities of mm-hmm. our own actions. True. Ownership is very important. Mm-hmm. I think the sooner you realize that, the better for you. True. Because you know that there are consequences for everything you utter out. Mm. The way I speak to you yes. is very important. Mm. The way I speak to that person is yes. very important. So, Number one, you take responsibility of your speech because mm. you know that I just can't go around saying whatever I think. Spaz. Exactly. It's it's often at the time I think we we say that uh, the truth can be right, mm-hmm. but the way it's presented is also important. True. You might be saying the right things in the, the wrong, wrong way, yeah. and the person that you are hoping to get the message won't get it because you say the truth, but in the wrong tone. Yes. So uh, the, the, even in the, the way we speak, the tone of our voice, the tone of how our message is intended to go is mm-hmm. very important. That, those are some of the things that people don't pay attention True. to. Uh, I'm right. Mm, and that's the this truth. is the truth. <laughs> the way you give it out very is very important. important. Yeah. So knowing how your message is going to be received is very important. So uh, taking ownership, mm-hmm. uh, positive reframing, yes. uh, adjusting mm-hmm. from what you've you used to. I think you mentioned that in the mm-hmm. unlearning. Yes, unlearning. So it's yes. like reframe what your life looks like to say, do I do I enjoy this? Mm-hmm. How about I, I take a look around from another lens sure. to say, you know, uh, mm-hmm. let me unlearn what I know mm-hmm. and create room to question yes. things that I need to question. Mm. Uh, many other times we just go with what... We were told. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think growing up in a black uh, household, you never question mm. your parents. That is unheard of. Whatever they say goes. Whatever the big man says goes. Amen. But then it's getting to a place to say, why, why do you, did you people do what you do? True. Uh, how, how does that benefit us today mm-hmm. in the society we live in? Because you're looking at progression. True. So it's always important to question certain things. Mm-hmm. Uh I think focusing on the solution, mm-hmm. many other times, like you said, mm-hmm. uh, full of dimes. Uh, you can't be an orphan <laughs> your for, whole life. For 50 years, my brother. <laughs> the first yeah. phases when your, 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 your loved ones die, yes, it's understandable. Mm-hmm. But you can't be 30 and an orphan and say, uh, my life turned out to be like this because I didn't go to school. My parents died. Like, bro. Everybody has lost somebody. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't mean that harshly, but mm-hmm. I've, I've lost people I cared about. I've mm-hmm. lost somebody he's cared about. But that does not stop us from moving forward. True. We always cherish the people that have left us. Mm-hmm. And by God, I, 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 I solemnly believe mm-hmm. that they would not be happy if they saw you use them as an excuse for not progressing in life. Yeah, true. Because all they've wanted for you was to do better. So using them as an excuse, I think that does not do justice. The best you can do for them is become a better person so that when they look down on us, they say, proud of I'm you. proud of him. I knew that he was going to do it despite everything. Please don't shock them, man. <laughs> like, ah, ah. <laughs> what did you just say? Uh, nah. uh, so another thing I think is set goals, yeah. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. set realistic goals, realistic goals that one step at a time, at a time, mm. you're getting to achieve those goals. Uh, 
practice gratitude gratification many times we we i think some of us when we we when we set out the goal mm-hmm. we we are often focused on the goal but celebrating every step that you little take little milestones is very important uh like you said i think people mm-hmm. the people we surround ourselves you are among the four or five people you hang out with so if you hang out with fools you be the other fool that to join the clique True. but the people that you hang out with is very important True. uh think the last one is uh, support mm-hmm. and take considerable action mm. uh, i think uh I, i that i can i can attach it to you know when you set the goal mm-hmm. every step is important True. every step that we take is, mm. is important smart yeah smart hope you're learning hope you're learning Okay. Director D. Sure. Man them giving dams like no any other day, man. I learn from the best. Yeah, man. Is <laughs> a is yeah. a, a man chef. I I, okay. I learn from the best. So directors. Yes. How does embracing change contribute to our mental strength and personal growth? <sighs> embracing change. Yeah. Okay. Uh like I said, uh, I came prepared. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. when when he told me that we're going to talk about a mindset, I think every even the bible records that we we are renewed yes, yes. by the transformation of, of our minds amen god knew what he was talking about the first step to change is up here yep and then up there or up here then down here yes uh, out of the abundance of our hearts Come. everything flows yes so here here then it flows so this is a very cardinal element of a human body. Yes. That's why they say if this is the mind is weak, then bra, you're good. You're done. But if if I'm able to get through mm-hmm. to your mind, then everything else will flow. True. Uh I love the Chinese people mm-hmm. on how they zen on the mind. They they, they have understood mm-hmm. the power that lies yes in the mind. That's why you find so. at at the young age Mhm. The, the young kids are able to do amazing things because they know like if we start at a young we'll, age we we'll start them young bra i think the 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 the, the, the videos that we keep sending each mm-hmm. other back and forth the reels <laughs> about how we see our friends mm-hmm. where uh Lewis Hamilton yeah his bali uh started to take him to to learn formula 1 at a young yes, age when he was very young It was a teenager but imagine if they started him like at say eight mm. or five. you know what i mean yeah so the sooner you expose mm-hmm. the young minds to what's possible because at that age mm-hmm. the kid does not know that this is impossible True. it's only when we get older when we say i can't start doing that that's impossible the bones are weak exactly but when you expose the young ones to to you know what's unfamiliar yeah. they always believe they can do anything sure. like the 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 famous quote you like say mm-hmm. what god can do does not exist amen <laughs> you know so it's only what you put your mind to mm-hmm. so uh embracing you know uh personal growth i'll say um number one is adaptability mm. adapting to new environments challenge yourself to engage in two new environments things that you're not comfortable with yeah and then you know try to adapt and learn what you can mm-hmm. learn from that uh number two, i think uh learning like i always said mm-hmm. uh learning always creates an opportunity for you to know what you didn't know true so always be curious mm-hmm. like you said ask questions the curiosity mm-hmm. be curious to know because the knowing creates an opportunity for you to learn something True. that you didn't mm-hmm. uh resilience build resilience it's not it's not always going to be easy mm-hmm. but uh build a shield True. that even though that day you wake up feeling a certain way mm-hmm. that will not stop you to get to the goal True. so be resilient uh and be creative mm-hmm. we are always taught to think outside the box one mm-hmm. of the things i I don't like mm-hmm. about our Zambian curriculum for education. Mm-hmm. We go to school, l- learn nine subjects. Thousand subjects. <laughs> nine subjects and um 
out of that nine, you you are only let's say you pass three, right? Mm -hmm. English, math, and biology. Mm -hmm. In another country, if you want to become a doctor, they will let you. Yes. Because you're good at what's needed. Yes. Those you're are good those. at biology. Mm -hmm. You're good at math. And you're good at English. That means you can, you know what the anatomy of the body yes. is, and you can speak, mm -hmm. and you can do some math. Done. For us, they need you to clear at least, I think, five. Mm -hmm. Now, now it's five. five. Before it was not you need everything. To clear everything. Man. Everything. Now it's the best five. But um, you, you you tend to ask yourself how much pressure. True that adds to somebody but then like how much value is the not that the education is bad education is important mm -hmm. but then if you look at the curriculum like can would they work around such things because often other times the things that we learn like the history yes the history we're learning how is that beneficial how is ninja thropas whatever they are oh, is how am i using that today no nope. but imagine if we're being taught financial literacy mm. At a younger age, by the time I'm here, mm -hmm. the things that I know now about financial literacy, if I learned that then, that mm -hmm. would have been beneficial. If they teach entrepreneurship, you know, at least I'm grateful for mm -hmm. the young ones that are upcoming now that it's at least they're smart. curious. You know what I mean? Yeah. They want to start mm -hmm. a business at 15. They're doing this. this they're on YouTube. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We didn't have that. So um, if the, 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 the government can still work around the curriculum and change one or two things, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'll go with self-awareness mm -hmm. and empowerment. Yeah. Uh, always trying to... The more you learn, mm -hmm. the more you add skills to you, Value, the more yes. empowered you become and the more valuable you become. Amen. So that's key. And then which comes into personal development. Mm -hmm. All of that embodies that. Yes. The more you learn, the more you know, the more you think outside the box, the more valuable to you become, which adds on to your personal development yeah. as a person. So you're not always going to blame mm -mm. things around you. No. But then with everything that you learn, personal development just adds so much value to you mm. as an individual. Mm. If, you know, this, these, are, these are free dimes, man. Exactly. So please... Uh, the only way you can show us support is by liking, sharing this, and subscribing. You yeah. know, that will mean a lot to sure. us. You know, sure. that's the only thing we ask for, and we promise to make this even ten times better. Yeah. So, um, embracing change, right? Yes. How does that add to your mental uh, strength yeah. and your personal growth, right? Um, I love the, the the thing that you said about uh, it starts in the Mind. minds and it flows, right? Yes. If uh, you read the Bible very well, right, yes. you would see that. What the devil used to do a long time ago, mm -hmm. the, the challenges that people back in the day were facing were things like drought, yes. you know, famine, yeah. you know, like these were catastrophic events, sure. you know. But now it's kind of shifted, mm -hmm. you know. It now fights your mind. Yes. There's a point you told me last time um, about how the devil is not omnipresent, yes. right? Yes, 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 yes. All he does is plant a seed. A seed. That's it. Even before you're born, yes. he just plants it and says, when the time comes, this is what whoever is going to be born, right? Yes. He will, he or she will face yes. these challenges, right? Yeah. And the most thing that the devil does, right? Mm -hmm. He, his first assignment is to break a family. Yes. That is number one assignment. Break families because he yes. knows out of families there'll be lawyers, there'll yes. be doctors, there'll be presidents. You know, there'll be leaders who want to invoke change. Yes. So imagine if he breaks you at an early age, how can you invoke change? It's hard, right? Parents split. Exactly. You know, mm -hmm. there's just catastrophic things that are happening around. Bitterness, you. bitterness, yeah. anger. You yes. know, all these things that are happening. You know why? Because he knows that the mindset is a beautiful thing. Yes. Imagine now growing up in an environment where. You are nurtured very well, right? Mm, mm. It's rare that you have difficulties into growing, right? True. That's why you find most of our white folks are, are like are able to grow up as young as they can be, right? They're able to do magnificent things at yes. a young age. And we think that us Africans can't do that. Yeah. Of course we can. It's just that our minds have been confined in a cage 
you know, by our past. And if we can change that mentality and say, we can do things, you know, yeah. we can do everything that anybody can do also, we can True. do that, True. you know. True. So it's very important to understand that change is very important because if you change, right, mm-hmm. if you if you're able to adapt to change, I love how a chameleon flows. Yeah. I've seen how a chameleon flows, right? Chameleon adapts to change regardless. Quick. It doesn't have to, you know, argue with anybody, but he knows that it's, this is important for me. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. this is my avatar state. True, true. <laughs> so if I do this and change into purple, nobody will see me, mm-hmm. you know, because I'm in my prime, you know. So I, I remember getting on a young ride yeah. and I was I was asking the driver, like, how's it been? And uh, Mandem just passed, you know. Yeah, I know these people, Shan, yeah, stealing money from us, all this kind of stuff, right? Uh, one way or another, I understand him, you know. But again, right, we talk about change. Yes. Change is very important. The more you fight it, right, the more you remain behind yes. in your colonial days, you know. So imagine the first time when Facebook came, our parents were against it, right? Hey, but who's more on Facebook now? Our folks. Yes. WhatsApp was the same thing. Hey, what's up, bro? Who's more on WhatsApp now? It's our folks. Yeah. So, um, once you learn to change with time, right? We can fight AI as much as we want now, but trust me, it has come. The sooner. <laughs> it has come. So we need to adapt to change and learn how can this add or change uh, our our growth, or how can it add and make our life a little bit easier, yeah. right? So adapting to change one makes your mind even strong because you're not stuck in your old ways. Mm -hmm. You want to learn and understand how certain things can help you uh, grow Mm -hmm. and uh, invoke change and invoke what God has created in you, right? So these are the tools that you have to really be aware and alert when you are in that place of trying to add, uh, let's say, growth to your mental health and your personal growth. True. Director D. Yes. What are the dangers of constantly seeking validation from others and how can we cultivate self-validation instead? Mm. Uh, constantly seeking validation. I think that, that one will stem from, I think, uh, number one, uh, insecurity. Mm-hmm. Not being uh, secure enough about who you are. That sure. means you always seek out opinions of others. Mm-hmm which is not good. Mm. Not that uh, asking for other people's opinion Mm. is bad, but letting their final judgment be what you take. Mm. So it's like, I hear what you're saying, but I'll consider that. But then you need to follow through with what your intuition is telling you. Mm. Uh, And also dependency, don't. Mm -hmm. You can't be fully dependent on other people. Uh, Always be self uh aware mm. yeah uh yes uh i think also authenticity mm-hmm. it's good to know who you are as a person because we all have principles and values and losing that mm-hmm. over other what other people are saying is is wrong so you not losing your true self true yeah and then i think uh cultivating the how to cultivate mm-hmm. now for better strategies, number one, uh, setting internal standards for yourself, mm-hmm. um, being self-aware, uh, celebrating the achievements. Uh, like, like I said, seeking feedback is, mm-hmm. is not wrong, but letting the feedback validate who you are mm-hmm. is, is not right. But mm-hmm. then uh, learn from the opinions yes. and uh, do better. Also celebrate the achievements and remove the Mm self-doubt because what that leads to is you not validating your final decisions Mm -hmm. for yourself. That means you're always dependent Mm -hmm. on what other people say. Mm. I think you said it all. And uh, the only thing I'll add is that learn to trust in who you are. Learn to trust in what God has created you to be. Um, Seeking self-validation can be harmful to you, your health, and everything because you'll never be who God has created you to be. So learn to trust in yourself and learn to do things your own way, you know, because God gave you the vision. He never gave anybody. So learn to give uh, yourself some room to be you, you know. So learn that and, yeah, 
the vision was never a conference call. Nah, man, <laughs> it was a personal call. Amen. Hey, <laughs> yeah. So, Mr. B official. Yes, sir. Uh, I think this is our last question in mm -hmm. this part. Part two will be coming. Uh, how can we redefine failure as a necessary step towards success and use it to fuel our growth? Mm, mm, mm. I think growing up, we've all been running away from failure. Nobody yes. wants to fail, you know? Sure. Um, but one thing our minds were played is that failure is a huge part of success. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the thing about failure. Growing up, we were never told to fail, right? Nope. So we were always told you need to pass, 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 pass. So if that, you fail, you get beaten. Exactly. So you know the circumstances that will follow up, right? So I feel failure is a very great part of uh, your achievements, your successes, and everything that adds up. True. You know, because failure just shows you that there's another way around yes. to do what uh, to do it another way. Yes. You know, so that you don't go the same route. So make sure that you embrace your failure, embrace your errors, embrace your mistakes, because those are the things that add up to success. Just like a picture that always show the iceberg, yes. you know, and deep down at the show, the things that somebody went through, you know. Yes. So it's very important to just uh, be in a place where you embrace those things because those are part of who you are. Mm. And those are the things that keep you grounded and make you be in a place whereby you are grateful for whatever that you have, you know. So make sure that you embrace your failure and embrace the things that make you human. I think you've, you've highlighted a lot. I think we were never told that uh, failure is part of success, mm -hmm. you know. But the sooner you understand that failure is part of success, mm -hmm. the better. So just to finish off what you're saying mm -hmm. is uh, change your mindset perspective. Amen. Always look at things from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. Embrace a growth mindset. Mm -hmm. Being comfortable and staying yes. in one place. Mm -hmm. But always... Wanting to move forward, like, okay, I failed at this, but how do I move forward from this? True. Uh, learn lessons, take lessons. Take lessons. Take lessons. F failure always teaches us something. Lessons. Learn, learn the lesson that failure is teaching you. Uh, and lastly, I'll end by s staying resilient. Mm -hmm. Like I said, uh, by embracing failure as an integral part of the journey towards success and leveraging it mm -hmm. as a catalyst for growth. Mm. We, we never look at fail, failure as a catalyst for growth. Mm -hmm. So knowing that even as we go, we take L's, mm -hmm. but L's don't determine the outcome. But as long as we take it as a learning curve, True. we'll always be great. Mm. I mm -hmm. think this is where we'll, we'll put a pin at that. If you didn't catch them, then I don't know when you're going to catch them, you know? So, uh, this is just the beginning, yeah. you know, and uh, thank you so much for joining us, you know, and thank you so much for everybody who has reached to this end to watch uh, until the last part True. of uh, the Uncut Conversations, you know. So all we just want to say is that uh, you just like, you know, comment and share. That's the only thing we ask you to do, you know, and yeah. we promise to make this 10 times better and give you the conversations that you definitely need or want but need, you know. So thank you so much. I've been your host, Popen to 7 and my nigga. Director day in the body. Yeah, so don't forget, follow us on all socials and make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss on the next episode. For me and my nigga, it's Sainar. Peace, Peace out. out.